talk to Democrats about the latest news in the Idaho legislature. Now, here are Paul, Jay, and Chris on 6-7 KBOI. Top of the morning, KBOI News time is 8.39. It's a minority Friday, and we have Representative High Clock from District 16 in the House this morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Oh, it's good to be seen. I'm glad I'm here. Yep. Rather be seen than viewed. That's right. Everybody says that. <laughs> um, uh, happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Good. Um, you, uh, in, the, in the State uh, uh, Affairs uh, Committee, uh, introduced a, a resolution to honor immigrants. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. It, it was because of the um, attention immigrants are getting right now in the media and the fact that I'm an immigrant myself. I came here when I was three years old. I thought it would be a good idea for the state to pay uh, recognition to the people who helped build the state and build the country. Other than the, the tribes, everyone came from somewhere else. So we're all immigrants under the, the skin and we share one story and that's to come to a new place and build a life for ourselves and our our family. And I thought I'd introduce it. Uh, a resolution went through the print hearing yesterday. Mm -hmm. How did that go? It, it passed unanimously. Good. I was I was very happy that uh, people understood that this is the kind of thing that we all share, and we should all at least accept the fact that we're all immigrants. And that's one of the outstanding values of America that we're an open society welcoming people that <clears throat> need help excuse me you didn't have any any opposition to it or anything like that no not yet um, I had some questions mm -hmm. you know there was some confusion about some of the terminology but that's technical right and we'll, we'll straighten that out but as far as the opposition no uh, people Again, it passed unanimously in the print hearing. But that's just the first hurdle. Sure. Chris and, and, and David on, on Monday talked about uh, the head of the Idaho Dairymen's Association who, who basically came out and said he wants lawmakers to oppose local enforcement of immigration laws. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, uh, I don't know how you can uh, oppose law. To begin with, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is law is what makes this country this country. We all live by laws. I mean, I I, I would hate to pull up to a red light and wonder if the person to yeah. my right is going to obey the light like I did. If you have laws, you, you have to uh, live live by them. I, I am to know that the immigrant vetting process is a fourteen step process, and it may take two three years for immigrants coming to this country to be able to uh, land safely and, and be placed. And, and let's be clear about this. I'm talking about immigrants who are coming here legally. Right. I mean, you, you can't talk about people who, who break the law because they're not going to, they're not going to uh, go to a rooftop and shout that they're breaking the law. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about, uh, when I talk about immigrants and when I talk about the law, it's that value that makes America great. There's there's a bill, uh, I guess, going into the House that uh, is designed to limit early voting in Idaho. How do you feel about this? And what's the reason it, it came up? I, I, didn't, I haven't read the bill yet. It, it, is, it just came up. And I, I mean, the concept to me is, is really kind of foreign. It's early voting is something that people who can't make it to the poll, can't take the day off on a Tuesday or a Thursday, this is their only chance that they're going to have to vote. And a lot of it will be early voting or voting absentee. So I think the earlier you can start voting, uh, within a parameter, of course, that it's better to let people give them the opportunity to vote. Uh, I, I don't know if, uh, again, I haven't read the bill yet, but I'm not inclined to favor it. Yeah. I, I just I was trying to figure out exactly what is the uh, the reason for it. Yeah, I, you know, in, in, I, I in can what, think of in one. In what reason. way does it improve the whole process? Well, I can think of one way that it restricts some of the process. You know, and that's to limit people who want to vote early. They won't be able to now. There have been 
there are a lot of people who depend on being able to vote early because that's the only time they can go. Right. And unfortunately, some of those people or a lot of those people may be Democrats. Not saying that that has anything to do with it, but it just uh, right. is a fact. You suspect it might. It, it might. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking with uh, Representative High Clock uh, from District 16, KBOI News Time 845. Uh, KBOI News Time is 849. It's Idaho Talks Live Minority Friday when we talk to Democrats from the Idaho State Legislature. Our guest is Representative High Clock from District 16 in Boise. Now, I, I think a lot of people don't know that besides being a legislator, you are involved in uh, other uh, another form of, of government. And, uh, so you have an announcement to make about that. I do. Uh, I've been giving this a lot of thought and didn't really know how I was going to go about announcing this. But since you invited me onto the show, this is a perfect venue that I've decided to run for re-election of the uh, Greater Boise Auditorium Board. And that is the, the group that runs the Boise Convention Center on the Grove. And we just went through the expansion that if you live in Boise, you know about the expansion. Uh -huh. So uh, as of today, barring any unforeseen circumstances, I, I will be running for re-election. And the election is May 11th. Uh, of 2017. Some some years ago, they were in the news an awful lot, and not quite so much anymore. Is is that is that a good thing? Is that something you did? Uh, I I like to take uh, a little bit of credit for it because one of the things that was going on at that time, I joined the board originally in 2011, became the chairman of the board, was the fight between the visitors bureau and the auditorium district. There had been a court court decision that really started ruffling a lot of feathers. And one of the things that I did, one of the first things I did was try and resolve that issue, mm -hmm. which I was able to. We worked out a deal where we could work together. Things quieted down. We could concentrate then on the expansion, and, which we did because we had not, we've been talking about an expansion since 1990. But we finally got the expansion done last year, started two years ago. And I take a, a little bit of uh, credit for bringing that one issue to surface and get it resolved. And that's one of the things I try to do is work with people uh, of different opinions and try to come up with a logical uh, resolution to problems. Um, an item um, on AP yesterday, the latest review of item teacher evaluation system has found that 64% of the selected evaluations were in compliance with state law. Uh, Blake Yaud, spokesman for the State Board of Education, told lawmakers uh, yesterday an 18-member review board vetted evaluations from 77 school districts. According to the report, 49% of the evaluations met the state's entire criteria an additional 15% met minimum standards, uh, but varied in their uh, ratings. How, how do you feel about this? Are we where we want to be here? Well, one of the things that I strongly believe in is teacher improvement. This, this has to go on. This has to be an ongoing basis that teachers take classes, find better ways of doing what they're doing, doing due diligence, if you will, for any new process that comes up. And then they have to be evaluated on that. And the people who do the evaluations, the, the experts, have to meet a, I think it's 19 standards that they have to meet according to a uh, formula that they worked out. There was some issue with, well, are they evaluating teachers based on the old formula or the new formula. And that's where I think a lot of the confusion came in over the last few weeks where the evaluations are good, the evaluations are not good. It, it's, it was really uh, Blake who came to the Education Committee. It was a joint meeting between the House Committee and the Senate Education Committee to explain how the evaluations work. And I think they, they have a good plan on moving forward. The, the objective
objective is to make sure that the teacher is teaching the best they can. And the only way you can really determine that is once the class is over and see where the students are. But during the year, when a, a principal or an administrator gets to observe a teacher in actual practice, that's when you get a feeling whether the teacher is doing what they should be doing. And that's a, a key component of the evaluation system. There was a rally yesterday at the State House. And rather noisy rally. Well, so yeah. somebody yeah. somebody asked me about it and said, "Oh, that's that immigration rally." And I said, "No, no, no this, no, this no. is this is about education." That was last time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this is about education. And uh, I think there were people who didn't know about it, but clearly a lot of the students did. Right. And what they're protesting essentially is the current uh, federal situation. How much is that going to affect uh, education in Idaho? That, that is a very good question because we're waiting to see what the trickle down will happen. Uh, I, I know who uh, the Secretary DeVos is. I, I'm, I've lived in Michigan for uh, a dozen years and remember her influence there. And I got to tell you, public education is one of the keystones of this country, that everyone can go and get a, an education. There are a lot of people who can't afford to go to private schools or go to... A, a, Catholic school or religious school, parochial schools. parochial schools, and public education has to be as good as it can be, because that, that's where all the ideas come from. That's where new science will come from. And if you restrict those two, you're going to end up with a two-tier system of education, the ones who can afford it and the ones who can't. And I don't think that's the objective of public education. And that, that would make, you know, a, almost a class war or at least a further divide between people in the country. Correct. And I think the students that came out yesterday, although I, I don't believe that breaking the law was something you should do, but they were willing to take a, a an absence, an official absence, to go out and show their opinion on the situation. And so I, I applaud them for doing that. All right. Uh, I thank you for uh, being with us this morning. We we appreciate you uh, stopping by. We're going to get out uh, by the 24th of March. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, the fire hose, when I first joined the uh, legislature, they told me about the fire hose. Yeah. That once they turn it on and things start coming out, fire hose is about halfway on now. Okay. Now, it's starting it, to make it, some movements. It's starting to make some movements. All right, thanks. We've been talking with Thank Representative High Clock from District 16 on this Minority Friday. KBOI News Time 856.